YouTube friends, Labor Day weekend. It's beautiful weather out. We've got Trenton's stunning 94 RXL sitting here running. Got one of my trash cans on it. And I got a couple of people to thank and talk about in this video. And the first one is Shane Jackson. I got one of Shane Jackson's new shirts on here. Shane's doing a lot of new shirts. Trenton's got one of them on too. Shane does the dash plaques like we got on on Trenton's sled here, Hooker. We got a dash plaque on it. I actually had the labeling done myself on them. But Shane does a lot for the snowmobiling industry. He does a lot of, like I said, the dash plaques. He takes care of the, the shirts. And um, there's a few, he's doing dash pads too. The handlebar pads, I mean, he's doing the handlebar pads. And, oh, the nose cone. And he's doing nose cone screens, but I'm not sure if he's actually still doing them. So that's why I wasn't gonna talk about it. He was doing some nose cone screens, but I'm not sure if he's still doing that part. But, I'll put a link to Shane Jackson in the comment section. I'll just, I'll put up a comment and I'll put a link right to Shane Jackson's uh, Facebook page and his Teespring account so that you can order a shirt off his Teespring account. But he has all kinds of, this is just one of many that Shane offers and he's got some really cool designs, but a lot of retro looking designs from like in the 90s, early 2000s. He's, it's really cool. You guys will really enjoy his shirts. And like I said, Shane is a great guy to have around that's redoing some of this stuff for us. Triple loving, these wedge, our wedge loving friends. Um, XC guys too, he's doing just all kinds of new shirts and stuff so that we can re-enjoy the way it was in the 90s and stuff when we're riding our, our wedge sleds. And then, then we have the, the shirts and stuff to wear along with it too, and hats. Let me grab one of my beers here. You know, I'm treating myself pretty well this week and I'm drinking a Liney's Oktoberfest and uh, God, the stuff's out freaking standing. So cheers to all my YouTube friends. Oh, is that awesome? So I've had some requests, not requests, more I've heard some people saying, you know, somebody should really put some kind of a EFI troubleshooting video out there. You know, how to figure out what's going on with your EFI system if it's not working, places to look, um, you know, stuff like that. I just, you know, I recently heard it that there was a few people out there that thought it'd be a great idea for somebody to put out a video that I'm gonna try and go through some of these steps people can figure out. But some of you are probably sitting there going, Doc don't know shit about EFI. How could he possibly do some kind of a video on EFI? It's true. Todd don't know a lot about EFI, but I do know the guys that are the smartest in the business on EFI. And when you're looking for information, I know the places to look. And that's what I'm about to share with all you guys is how to find the information to figure out your EFIs. And the biggest one, let me set my beard on. The biggest one is on Facebook. There's a Facebook group out there. I gotta get my notes because I got a lot to talk about here, fellas. Lots to talk about. But the biggest one, actually I'm gonna give the camera back to my, let me see my brother's shirt. Spin around, Troy. <clears throat> Troy's got one of my shirts on here. My triple loving friends. That's an awesome shirt. So I'm gonna give the camera back to my brother. Troy's gonna film this. I got pages and pages and pages. I gotta keep my hands. So the group on, on Facebook is called Players EFI RXL N500 Show Off Tech Talk and, and Swap Me. So for you Facebook guys that haven't found that group yet, search for that group. There's overwhelming amount of information on there to keep these old girls running. And there's a couple guys on there, particularly like Mike Holmquist, Dave Barletta, and uh, Dave Anderson, I believe was the other one, um, that are unbelievable they they know these things top to bottom back to front they know everything about these efi systems and they're huge help and mike Holmquest actually has a video um, in the help section if you go into there in the articles i think it was go into the articles and mike Holmquest actually put a video on there on how to test your injectors and your ecu and your fuel pump and i'm going to touch on some of the things he talks about in there um, so for you guys that aren't on Facebook, at least on YouTube, you're able to get some of this information to figure out what is going on. And first thing I'm gonna say here, guys, battery. Battery, battery, battery. I said that a few times. Gotta have a good battery, yearly. Spend the money. You may think the battery made it this year. More than likely, more than likely you should be changing your battery once every year at the best you're gonna get out of is two years. And this, this sled sits on a battery maintainer all the time, all the time. As soon as you get anything that's glitching on your EFI system, go for the battery. Battery is the first place to look. Second one 
is your grounds. Check all your grounds, make sure all your grounds are clean and all your connections. Start pulling your, your relay connections apart. A lot of these sleds sat outside and leaves and garbage and stuff would build up underneath these hoods and start corroding the connections and stuff. And that's the things that you need to look for is your connections. You can't have any corrosion in any of your connections. Got any corroded wires? Things aren't gonna work correctly in here. And your grounds, your, if your grounds are dirty, um, that's also not going to work correctly if your grounds are bad. So those, those few things right there are going to solve most of your guys' issues is the battery and your wire connections. So I'm going to tell you how to test your fuel pump. And one of the first things you should do, this was suggested, is this black hose right here. Hopefully Troy can get in on that. This is your return line right here that goes back into your tank. That you should switch out to a clear hose. So you can see what's going on in your hose. Switch that back out to a clear hose. And that way you can see if you got bubbles in your system, if you got fuel flowing, a lot of things can be diagnosed if you have a clear hose on here and you can see what's going on in your fuel system. A little bit of bubbles in there, everything's good, that's normal. A lot of big bubbles in there, you're sucking in air somewhere. And if I was sucking in air somewhere, one of the first places I would look is my pickup tube in the tank. That means that your tube is probably more than likely got rot marks and it. it's got holes or it's broke off and you don't have enough fuel to cover up all the way up the line. And then your fuel pump will start picking up air out of your tank. That's the first place I'd look for air is your pickup line in your tank. But, and if you don't have any fuel flow at all, you got big problems then. You either got a fuel pump not working or you got plugged fuel filters. Another place to look is your fuel filters. Make sure they're not plugged. Very important because the, the fuel injection system works off of pressure. You got to have pressure. And your fuel filters are dirty, you're not going to get enough pressure. And another thing you do is install a fuel pressure gauge into one of these systems. You can diagnose a lot of issues by having a pressure gauge because you might see fuel flowing through your return line. It's flowing fuel, but it's not building any pressure. Pressure is key on these systems. So at your fuel pump relay, you can unplug that and check for 12.9 volts at your relay. Your relays are down in the belly pan and down. I don't want to unhook anything because I actually don't, I don't want to disturb, I don't want to disturb any connections. If I don't have to unhook anything, I'm not gonna. So I don't want to unhook anything to show you exactly, but at your fuel pump relay, which is mounted down in here, you can check for 12.9 volts. That's what your battery should always be at is 12.9 volts. If you got below 12 volts, these things are not gonna start. Not gonna. You can put a battery charger on it and get it up above that, and it may run good, but if you don't have enough energy that can store in the battery, it's not gonna allow the sled to run. That's why I said battery, battery, battery. Key is your battery. So up here, up at your computer, Troy can come over here and zoom in on this, and I'll show you the colors of wires where you can test for your um, ECM. You, got, you want 12.9 volts at these green wires right here. These three of them on the RXL, there's only two on the 500s. A lot of this information is gonna to relate to the 500s also. So what you can do is you should have 12.9 here. You can unplug this and then hook, ground your green wire out. If you ground it, each wire will fire one of your injectors in here. And with your air box off and you energize your fuel pump, you stick a piece of paper down in your throttle body, you can click and you don't wanna hold your ground on here for long. It's just made to pulse it. So touch it off, you'll hear your injector click, it'll shoot fuel. That way you know your injector isn't plugged and you know your injector's working because if you ground it, then the injector should work off these green wires right here. Let me turn the page. We got a lot of things to cover. Whew. Lots of things to cover. The other thing is you can run your fuel pump off this pink wire right here. This pink wire, if you ground that, that will actually trigger your fuel pump. Without this plug-in hooked up to your ECU, you can ground that pink wire and trigger your fuel pump and check your fuel pump and make sure it's actually working. And then with that fuel pump fired off your pink, with that grounded, with your fuel pump running is when you will touch off on these green wires to fire your injector. Um, yeah, get that. Got all that, check all, check all your grounds and connections. I kind of already covered that. So the ECUs on these things, the ECUs are very durable. They're simple. 
There's not a lot going on them. They're a very durable ECU. So in order, these don't fail much. So if you're not, something's not working right, don't just assume right away, I got a bad ECU. They're actually a really, really good ECU. They're very, very durable and just, they don't fail a lot. So don't always, always think it is your ECU. And if your ECU does go, you'll get actually a, a code error for the injector circuit or your barometer sensor failure. And I'm gonna go through all the codes. I'm gonna list all these codes off for you. So hopefully you get out your pen and paper. I hope you're taking notes already because God knows I had to take notes when I got all this information. So here you go guys. Pencil and paper, pen and handy. Make sure you got a beer ready to go. Let's take some notes and I'm gonna explain all these codes. So we got a, up on the top of the ECU, you have a light. Right here, I'm sorry. It's on the side of the ECU, you have a light down here. That's where it's going to give you your codes. It's going to flash. So, one long flash and one short flash. That's code 11. That's your throttle positioning sensor. One long, dot, one long flash, two short flashes. That's code 12. That's going to be your crank temp sensor. One long flash three short flashes, code 13. That's your intake air temp. One long flash, four short flashes, code 14. Barometric pressure, barometric pressure sensor. That's one of them that you'll get if your ECU goes bad. Uh, one long flash, five short flashes, code 15, it's your water temp sense. Two long flashes, one short flash, that's code 21. Mag side injector. Two long flashes, two short flashes, code 22. Center injector, or it'll be your PTO injector on a twin, on a 500. Two long flashes, three short flashes, code 23. It's your PTO injector on a triple. Three long flashes, one short flash, code 31, low battery. Three long flashes, two short flashes, code 32, low charging system output. Three long flashes, three short flashes, code 33, it's your CDI output. Now these last couple only pertain to the 500 systems because there's a type one and a type two ECU. Type one runs on the RXLs, type two run on the 500 EFI sleds. Uh, the other thing we did on this sled too, not only is it gorgeous and amazing looking, but we did install a voltage. We have a digital voltage meter on here. So when you're actually on the sled, you can keep an eye on your voltage to make sure you're staying above that 13, 13 and a half, 13, seven is what you want to see for charging. And even when you fire up the sled, you can always, that voltage meter will come on and it'll show you like 12 and a half, 12, nine before your startup to know that you have enough juice in your battery. Before you even try to start it, it'll diagnose some issues right there. Cause if you turn your switch on, the voltage regulator comes on, or the, I'm sorry, the, the voltage meter comes on. And right now his battery's sitting just down below. And actually we just had it running too. And it, it uh, I sensed that it was having some low battery issues because it didn't want to come up, up on its idle right away. But he hasn't had this thing plugged in for what, about a month, Trenton? I think we had we unplugged it and moved it to the other side of the barn and we didn't plug it back in, our bad. But this voltage uh, meter here, or digital readout deal will tell you some of them issues before you start tearing everything apart. You can just look at that and say, oh, well, my battery's low. So I'll just charge it or plug it in on the maintainer. So, so I hope some of this information has helped some of you guys out. I'm no EFI expert. You can comment in the comment section some questions you have. And I would have to think people that know more than me are gonna jump in and answer some of these questions too. The other place you can go, like I said, Facebook. I was anti-Facebook, so I hated it. I Everybody around me, all they did was talk about, hey, did you see on Facebook? Hey, did you see on Facebook? Hey, I seen, I seen that. I hated Facebook. Hated it, hated it, hated it. I finally joined it two years ago, and main reason was because a lot of the sled groups that I was online with were kind of going away because the support system of it sucked to try and load pictures and, the, and other issues there. So all these guys that were on these groups just started starting groups on Facebook because it's an easier format, way easier. And I had to do it. I mean, I was losing my groups that I was part of. And so I joined Facebook and started finding all these specialized groups now, especially on 
as an EFI sled, it's all pertained to that. And so there's so much information on there. That's why I finally joined Facebook. And any out there that are on the fence of thinking, I don't want to know everybody's drama going on, it's not like that. You only see what you want to see on there. So I would encourage any of you that need information on something like this and you're not on Facebook, I would just join it specifically for groups to get into chats, to find out issues and find out troubleshooting ways to figure out your snowmobiles. And there's all kinds of groups. There's so many cool groups. And I joined a whole bunch of different hot rodding ones and uh, flathead groups and snowmobile groups. I mean, I'm probably in 20 different snowmobile groups that pertain to certain snowmobiles only. And uh, I love it. I love it now. I, like I said, I, I was anti-Facebook. I'm 50 years old. I didn't think I needed to be part of it. And I, I, I don't turn back now. I'm glad I actually joined Facebook. So that's what I have, guys. Cheers. I hope everybody's having a great Labor Day weekend. Thanks for watching the video. I hope the information I provide you is going to help you. Um, I, I kind of went through it fast, but I try to keep my videos on the short side. So cheers. Thanks, guys.